to this candidates forum. We have candidates for this um, uh, city council, <laughs> the city of Cupertino city council. It's all those C's, they're hard to get out. I'm Roberta Holloman. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Cupertino Sunnyvale. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages active participation of citizens in government and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League never supports nor opposes candidates for elective office, but sometimes takes positions on ballot measures. Tonight's forum is sponsored by the AAUW, the City of Cupertino, the League of Women Voters, and the PTA. For those who are here live in the audience, there is information out in the lobby about the candidates. You can also find more information on the candidates at the City of Cupertino's website, which is cupertino.org, and at the League of Women Voters website, which is smartvoter.org. I will introduce the candidates and then run over the rules of the evening. We have on my left, Sandra James, Patrick Kwok, Robert Levy, Oren Mahoney, Jeff Patno, and Dolly Sandoval. The candidates are going to be given two minute, or three minutes for their opening statement. Then we will have questions from the audience. You may write your questions on cards that will be distributed, and I will ask the questions of the candidates. During that time, the candidates will have one minute to answer those questions, and at the end of the evening, each candidate will have two minutes to give a closing remark. Uh, the candidates have drawn uh, numbers for the uh, order of the opening statements. And then when we get to the questions from the audience, I will be calling on the candidates in a random order. Um, I think we're about ready to start. And the first candidate to speak will be Patrick Kwok. Thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is Patrick Kwok. I'd like to start off with my education and training. I received my master's degree from San Jose State in civil engineering and my master's degree in public administration from Hayward State University. By way of profession, I am a registered professional civil engineer and I have 30 years of municipal experience working for the state of California and also for the city of San Jose. I manage a department uh, which is with a budget similar to the size of uh, Cupertino, about $30 million. And I am in charge of an environmental uh, department uh, which is provide environmental programs to the city of San Jose and also the tributary agencies. Um, I also have extensive experience in planning. Uh, I have been in the planning commission for almost three years now, and this year I chair the planning commission. Um, my three years dealing with planning experience has given me a lot of opportunities to interact with the citizens of this community and find out what the issues are, what the major issues of concern, and how we can do to interact and bring Cupertino to a community that will promote the quality of life and improve the neighborhoods. And I'm fortunate to have the opportunity uh, to do so. Um, as far as the, my community improvement as, uh, services are concerned, I have done a lot of community services, mainly I belong to the Cupertino YMCA on the board of directors, and I am also, uh, I chair the 2001 Cupertino uh, YMCA Capital Community Campaign this year, and I also belong to the uh, California Water Environment Association and Board of Directors, and I co-chair the this year Moon Festival and also the Chinese Summer Festival. In addition, I also serve as a lecturer and Eucharist Minister and Finance Committee member for St. Joseph of Cupertino. Cupertino is a very ex exciting place to live. Uh, we've been in this area for uh, almost 20 years now, in the Bay Area for 36 years and this is where I raised my family. I have six kids and three grandchildren. I'm really fortunate to have that opportunity to be in this area to raise the kids. And all of the kids, they all are graduate from local high schools and also are college graduates. Um, we like Cupertino because it is a place that we can always call home, a place where we can raise our children and we have a very, very good uh, education system 
and especially uh, the uh, open space and uh, really good quality of life and uh, uh, excellent neighborhood and public safety program. Uh, the reason why I'm running, because I want to keep o Cupertino uh, a better place to live so that we can all be proud of it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Dolly Sandoval. Thank you for being here or for tuning in this evening to learn more about the choices before you in this upcoming election. My name is Dolly Sandoval and I am a lifelong resident of this area, graduating from Cupertino schools, attending and graduating from De Anza College and going on to the University of California. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. I earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics and a teaching credential. I currently teach algebra and geometry over at Los Gatos High School. I have experience that matters in this race. I've been elected to the Foothill De Anza Community College Board for the last 10 years, serving both Cupertino and surrounding cities. My proven track record as an elected official includes being a watchdog for the taxpayer dollars creating and enforcing our environmental guidelines at the college district and making sure that our educational offerings match the needs of our students. At Foothill De Anza, I have budgetary oversight for an operating budget that is seven times larger than that of the city of Cupertino. But my track record, my experience does not end there. I serve you on the Citizens Advisory Commission for the Valley Transportation Authority. I'm a board member for Cupertino Community Services, a nonprofit organization helping those less fortunate in these difficult economic times. I'm also the pr president of a nonprofit organization called the Role Model Program that is helping kids stay in school, stay off drugs, and make positive life choices. There are some important issues facing Cupertino, and I'm eager to work on them. They include managing the city's budget, especially in tough economic times, providing leadership on housing that affects all of us, the housing issues that affect all of us, protecting our open, open space, ensuring our green belt stays around this city, protecting public safety, partnering with our schools to maintain our quality education, and at long last, creating solutions to our traffic problems. In short, I hope to work on improving our quality of life. I welcome your input, so please take a moment, visit my website at www.dollysandoval.com. Find out some vital information there, and also please tell me about your concerns. I hope you'll join the Santa Clara County Dep Deputy Sheriff's Association, as well as the county firefighters numerous former mayors and council members, current council members Don Burnett and Michael Chang, as well as the Stevens Canyon Residents Association, the Sierra Club, and the League of Conservation Voters in supporting my candidacy. Many of you know me and know of my commitment, and I hope you cast one of your votes for me, Dolly Sandoval, on November 6th. Thank you. And our next candidate is Robert Levy. Hi, I'm Bob Levy. I'm delighted that you're listening to me because over 25,000 of you are registered voters. The only trouble with that is that in the last city council election, only 7,800 of you got out and voted. Let's do better this time. Take the time to get to the polls. Okay, I've asked you to get out and vote. Now, why should you vote for me? It's not because I'm going to promise to do great things for you. It's because I'm going to ask you to do great things for yourselves. First, you remember the difference between traffic during the school summer vacation and now. I live near Monte Vista High School, Lincoln Elementary School, and Kennedy Junior High School, which have over 4,000 students in those three schools. About three quarters of those students either drive themselves or are driven to the schools by their parents. If there were 50 passenger buses carrying those students, there would be only 60 buses to get the 3,000 of them to the schools. Mm -hmm. The situation is similar around all of the schools in the city. The numbers are smaller, but the traffic may be more concentrated. 
my goal is to get almost all of those cars off the road and into students from them into buses. To obtain this benefit, however, we'll all have to pay. Those of you who have been driving your children will have to pay a small tax to get them into buses. Those of us who are going to see emptier streets will have to be see us pay a small tax to get those streets emptied. I envision the city as the coordinator of the busing program, making it one bus system rather than two, taxing the school district areas for those schools in the city and, the, and paying the bills for the buses. Listening to the city council at meetings, I had the feeling the city council wasn't listening to its citizens as much as they might. General law cities such as ours are allowed by the, stat by the statutes to have five, seven, or nine city council members. I think we should increase the number from five. It was okay when we had 2,500 people when we were incorporated in 1955. I'm not sure it's right now. And I believe that the council members should be elected by districts. Then, if a council member has to be replaced during the member's term, the election could be by just that district rather than by a citywide election. It would be possible and essential to do so because it would be the district election. Creating districts may create some additional problems, but it may mean more representative government for all of us. I hope that you'll see me as one of those most likely to make a difference for you in accomplishing my goals for us all. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Jeff Patno. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to participate in this forum. My name is Jeff Patno. I was born and raised in Cupertino, and I'm a product of our public schools. Both of my parents were teachers in this community, and my father was one of the first professors at De Anza College when it originally opened. My brother is an engineer at Apple Computers, and on Saturday, I'm going to be marrying a woman that I met nine years ago while we were both waiting tables at the Good Earth Restaurant in Cupertino. So as you can see, my story is a Cupertino story. In large part, that's part of the reason why I'm running for city council now. The decisions that the city council is going to make in the next several years will dramatically impact the shape and feel of what Cupertino will look like for the next 10 to 15 years. I currently serve on the Cupertino Planning Commission. I have a background in business. I have a background in community service. And I have other government experience as well. As someone who grew up in Cupertino, I understand what's great about growing up here. I understand why this is a great place to raise a family. That's why I'm hoping to start a family here. And I understand why this is a great place to recreate and hang out with friends. As a product of our local schools and someone who grew up participating in Little League, soccer, scouts, and other parks and recreation programs, I understand the importance of preserving and protecting what makes Cupertino great. As a member of the Cupertino Planning Commission, I've been able to build consensus and make tough decisions on behalf of our community in an effort to put neighborhood interests first before the interests of developers. I believe our community is in a unique period of transition. As we confront an economic slowdown combined with a demand for housing, a library that is yet to be, the, the ground has yet to be broken on, which I think we should move forward with, the need for safe streets, additional open space, and the need for additional retail, including a quality bookstore, which I think we haven't had in many years once the Cleanwell Lighted Place for Books left the community. I believe Cupertino's most precious resources are available land. And that is why land use decisions will be one of the most important decisions facing the council in the coming years. We'll be revising our general plan, which is the blueprint for all community development decisions. But we'll also be making decisions specifically regarding the Valco Shopping Center, the Oak Center, Town Center, and pr trying to protect our neighborhoods and our hillsides from additional threats. I'm running for city council to ensure that we preserve the quality of life of our community. I'm proud to have the endorsement of elected officials such as Congresswoman Anna Eshoo and former State Assemblyman Jim Kinnean, Councilman Don Burnett, and a half dozen former mayors of Cupertino. I also have the endorsement of the Sierra Club, the Realtors and Homeowners Associations, the Apartment Association, the Stevens Canyon Residents Association, and my new wife as she sits at home getting ready for our wedding on Saturday. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Sandy James. 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Sandy James. I'm your mayor this year. And I have uh, worked for you and with you for the last 12 years. You elected me uh, in 1989 to the Cupertino School District Board of Education. I served as president two years. And you worked alongside of me on Measure A, where we raised $71 million to renovate the 23 schools in the Cupertino School District. Four years ago, you asked me to run for city council. And I did that. And you were kind enough to elect me. And over the last four years, we have accomplished great things together. We opened a new senior center. Center. We changed the rules for single family homes on lots because you were very unhappy about large homes on small lots and we spent a year and a half changing that, that ordinance. It's now a, a, a pattern and uh, an ordinance that is copied by many cities throughout <coughs> the county. We just dedicated a new firehouse. We have the three newest firehouses in the county. We added to our law enforcement, and we are, uh, we are working on the library. I co-chair the library committee because you asked us to build a new library. We have much to accomplish together, but the world has changed before our very eyes. And we all know that on September 11th, um, our futures became very unclear. Our futures in the community, our futures in our family, in the nation, in the world. And I do believe that this is a time for proven leadership, for people who have experience, understand the community, have your trust and loyalty, and have a, me have a measure of integrity that you can count on. I am very proud to be the only candidate endorsed by Sheriff Lori Smith and Fire Chief Doug Sporleader. I'm not going to go through a whole list of endorsements. You can certainly look through my literature or look on my website, which is www.sandrajames.org. But I'd really like tonight to talk about more substantive things. I think law enforcement is an important issue that we're all preoccupied with, and rightfully so. I have asked the city, and for six months have been working on having coverage here at City Hall 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right now, we have law enforcement here, but you cannot get in the building uh, after City Hall is closed. And so you can get them on 911, but you can't walk in the building and talk to a sheriff's deputy. We will be doing that. I've asked the, the um, I have asked our, our uh, staff to uh, take some space out of our lobby, which is extensively large, and to enlarge the space that we have for the Sheriff's Department. And we will be having someone here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In addition to that, we'll be talking further tonight about land use issues, youth issues, all of the things we share in common. And I hope again that you will entrust me with your faith and your trust, and together we will look to this future and to the challenges and accomplish the things that we know need to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Oren Mahoney. Good evening. My name is Oren Mahoney, and I'm running for city council because I'm committed to creating a better Cupertino. I will make a difference on a city council in four main areas. First, civic and business experience. I've spent over 30 years in Cupertino, raising my family, working and living here. I've volunteered to lead many youth and community activities and served for eight years on the city of Cupertino's planning commission. In addition, I've been a Hewlett Packard employee for over 34 years, 20 of those on the Cupertino site holding a wide variety of management positions. With the current economic downturn, the city will face increased fiscal challenges and solid business and management experience will be important on your city council. Second, a fresh approach to Cupertino's issues. Cupertino is about to update its general plan. The city council has a golden opportunity to create a general plan that will set in stone parameters about how we want the city to evolve over the next 10 years. This is the tool that will effectively shape the character of the city control growth and traffic, and preserve open space. In addition, while we probably will never have the classic downtown that we all seem to want for Cupertino, I do believe with the building of the new library, we may have an opportunity to create what I'm loosely calling a town square, which will be a place to uh, provide a place for people to spend quality time in Cupertino. It might have elements of a European plaza or a classic New England town square. I really don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. What I want to do is have a structured process to provide broad community input into both the general plan and the potential for a town square. Third, improved communications. As I walk around the city during this campaign, I consistently hear that the city council needs to listen and be more responsive to the inputs of all its citizens. We need to find a way to have more community input early in projects instead of community reaction after the project is proposed. I have a proven track record in all of my community activities. 
of listening to all sides and recommend sol recommending solutions that are best for Cupertino. In addition, I will also hold regular town hall meetings to make sure your voice is heard on a regular basis at City Hall. Finally, commitment to Cupertino. I am running for City Council because I have the experience to make a positive impact on a city that I care about. For me, the City Council is not a stepping stone for future political office. I pledge that my time and effort will be spent on serving Cupertino first. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to take a brief break um, for you in the audience to write your questions. There will be people in the aisles if you need a card or a writing implement. Just raise your hand. If your questions are already written, please pass them in. So we'll continue in just a couple of minutes. Meet Cupertino resident and League of Women Voters representative Roberta Holloman. Roberta has an extraordinary record of service with the League, working with others to foster public interest, education, and participation in the democratic process. Roberta is part of a unique volunteer and professional co-op involving people who envision developing a state-of-the-art internet technology to help voting citizens make better, more informed voting choices. They created Smart Voter, and it was launched here in Santa Clara County in 1998. Smart Voter is a, an internet um, project. It's a website with election information. The League of Women Voters is um, an organization that provides nonpartisan information to citizens to help them make up their minds on how they're going to vote. And this is just one more way that we can bring this information to the voters. Our goal is to go nationwide. And the unique thing about our website is that when a voter types in his or her address, his home address, they get a ballot that is just what they're going to vote on. They don't have to comb through a lot of different candidates that are running in districts that you know they are not going to be voting in. So they can get this information. Uh, users are, are most enthusiastic, particularly since they can access this information um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, when, it's, when they feel like looking at it. Um, in fact, in one election, we had someone uh, log on at 7.10, election night. They're on their way home from work, and they were going to look at things to, to refresh their memory before they went and voted, before the polls closed at 8. Earlier this year, Smart Voter was selected as a finalist in the Global Bangman Challenge, an annual competition that recognizes advancements in information technology. We're hoping that Smart Voter will help bring more voters to the polls by giving them the information that they need, making it easy for them to get the information, easy for them to register because with the website if they log on early enough they can get a registration form if they're not registered yet. They can request an absentee ballot if that's what they want and so we're hoping that that will make it easier for people to vote and you know, increase the voter turnout. For more information about Smart Voter and the League of Women Voters, log on to www.smartvoter.org and www.ca.lwv.org. You can also find links to these two sites via Cupertino's website at www.cupertino.org. Remind the audience that there are three seats open on the City Council. Uh, you can vote for up to three people. Um, and then a reminder to the candidates that during this portion you're going to be given one minute to answer. So the first card you see come up will be the 30 second mark and then the red card will be time to stop. And I, since we're on a short timeline on these questions, I will interrupt you if you don't stop on time, okay? <laughs> Okay, let's start with 
Here's the question. What would be your number one priority issue to tackle when you get elected? And we will start with Oren Mahoney. I think the number one issue is the upcoming general plan. I talked a little bit about how important it is because it really shapes everything else. It covers so many other topics. And what I would do about that is, is basically change the process. The last time I was involved and I was on the Planning Commission when we approved the last general plan, we went through a different process. We had something called a goals committee. Many of you may have even been on that. That's how I got involved in, in, civic, uh, in, in, in civic experience, by being on that goals committee and then moving on to the Planning Commission from there. It was a series of facilitated community meetings where we got community input first and then talked about the general plan. I think we need to do that this time. We're moving through the general plan with some public input, but it's public input to what's already been presented. And I think we need to start with a cleaner slate. There's a lot of things that we could do differently, and this is the time to potentially look at doing them differently. Uh, Ms. Sandoval. I'm going to use the catch-all improving our quality of life because I think there's not one particular issue that we need to address, but I think we need to increase housing supply so that we can have a number of uh, people live in this city that can't currently afford it, whether they're teachers or clerical workers, uh, police officers or, or firefighters. I also think that when you're talking about quality of life, it does mean improving traffic and our traffic congestion around this town and utilizing mass transit in better ways. Also making sure that the finances of this city's budget are well under control so that we can provide services to you, the residents that are paying for them. And with that, um, it also means protecting our environment so that when we are out enjoying Cupertino, we can go to our hillsides and our parks and make sure that we have some place to go. Thank you. Sandy James? Um, I believe the question was the most important issue. Is that correct? What would be your number one priority one issue priority to tackle issue. when you get elected? It is very difficult to pick one uh, because they're all inclusive. And, and I would have to say that um, the land use issue is probably the one I hear most from the community. So I'm going to pick that one, although I think all the decisions we make impact everything else. Uh, there is limited available land left in this community to develop. And the community is begging for housing. Housing, housing, more housing, more affordable housing. The reality is, if you want more housing, housing and you have a limited available land, you either have to go up into the hillsides, and none of us want to do that because we want to protect our open space, or you have to go up. And most people don't want density. So we have a problem here, folks, because you can't have more housing and no land and not have some density. So we have to come together. General plan is one of the ways to decide where to do that housing, how much to do it, where are there places in the city we want, how much do we want, and what should it look like. And that's a collaborative, cooperative thing between the businesses, the residences, your elected officials, the educational institutions, and all of you. That is going to be a very large challenge for us. Patrick Kwok? I think my the biggest focus uh, in the next year or so will be uh, to maintain a quality of life and also the neighborhood come first. When you talk about quality of life, it covers a wide spectrum, spectrum of uh, activities uh, such as open space, housing, traffic, congestions, education systems, and uh, a walkable uh, community in Cupertino. Uh, at the same time, I am also uh, in favor of supporting the library, uh, make sure that uh, it is being built within budget and uh, on time. I'm a fiscal conservative person, and knowing the <coughs> economic decline in the next few years, we got to watch out on what we are spending the next few years, set some priorities. At the same time, uh, try to streamline operations and make sure that we find alternate way to, in, to get uh, revenue, such as hotel uh, taxations, at the same time, revitalizing uh, Walco Park, and that would be my main uh, activities in future. Thank you. Bob Levy? My first priority is to solve the problem that plagues us 180 days a year, which is school traffic. I think it's time to stop having task forces and study groups and do something about it. 23 years ago, when Proposition 13 came in, school busing disappeared. Before that, we didn't have the problem. I'll admit that at the time, 
We didn't have as many people who lived as far away as they do now. However, school buses have worked. School buses will work again. And I think that we can do things about it. That's my first priority if elected. Thank you. Jeff Patnow? I think specifically the jobs to housing imbalance here in Cupertino is something that I would hope to work on. Currently there are 44,000 jobs here in Cupertino and there's 18,000 households here in Cupertino. And so from that ratio, no wonder our streets are congested. No wonder teachers and law enforcement officials and other public service employees don't have the opportunities to live and work in this community. As a member of the Planning Commission, I'm proud to have helped reject proposals for that called for additional office space because my feeling is I'd much rather keep a vacant piece of land vacant before we put something there that the community doesn't need. What I'd like to see is more mixed use. What I'd like to see is some you know, housing opportunities that would fit within the unique character of particular neighborhoods without damaging quality of life so that we can increase opportunities for uh, teachers and others to live and work in the same community. Thank you. We've had several questions about the library, and I'm going to try to um, combine them if I can. <clears> the <throat> first questioner says, <clears throat> I have heard that the new library will be smaller than originally planned due to a reduced budget. The Cupertino Library is more heavily used than any municipal library I know of. Can we find a way to restore the funding required to build the larger library originally proposed? Then also there are questions about what um, what are the architectural building plans and facilities uh, right now, and are they sufficient for the city? So let's start these answers with Jeff Patno. My understanding of the current proposal for the library is that the voters of the community told the city that they wanted a $22 million library, and that is what the community is going to get. There was some talk earlier in the year, which did raise some concern, especially on my part, when the, the, local, the city government talked about shaving $3 million off the uh, proposed budget for the library. They were smart and they were creative and they were able to find the additional revenue for it. So now we do have a $22 million uh, library plan in the works. The second part of your question is my biggest fear is that we're going to construct a library that will be at capacity as soon as it's built. And so as we move forward with the project, I will make sure that this is a library that the library community is proud of, that the residents will be proud of, and it won't be one that once we build it, we're going to start talking about how we're going to expand it yet again. Sandy James? <laughs> I co-chair that committee, and by the way, we have had numerous public meetings, uh, so there is an all kinds of information on that. We have hired the architects. We had a meeting just today. A number of you in the audience were there. I know that. Uh, Robert was there. He's been at all of those meetings. Um, and so we do have an architect. In fact, this, the town plaza that Oren's talking about is part of this project, and we've been talking about it in public meetings for a very long time. Uh, we talked extensively about it today. The budget uh, we did originally, because we have gone through our budget in preparation for the economic uncertainty and scaled back everything, uh, but we have the 22 millions. We did some creative budgeting. We extended our, our bond uh, financing out 30 years and saved uh, an additional 400,000 a year toward the library, found another million. And so we are up to the 22 million. We have not decreased the size. Um, we are moving forward. I'm keeping my fingers to the pulse because it is, an, it is an, a project that takes a lot of money, the largest project we've ever done in the city, and we all need to keep our eyes on it and make sure it comes through on time, on budget. Warren Mahoney? Yeah, I think, I think the library is a good example of where some of the processes I was talking earlier did actually work. Um, originally there was uh, an interim plan to, to, to keep the old library building and to basically squeeze the new library into the, uh, the plaza out here, and that would have required a uh, parking, uh, parking garage across the street, and that would have been part of the town center and, and added complications in, into that project as well. Um, a series of workshops, similar to some of the things that I was talking about, did happen, and out of that came uh, basically the public input to put the library on top of where the old library is, and especially after we learned how, how expensive it would be to retrofit that building. So there's a case where, where I think it did work, and we do have an opportunity not only to build a library that I hope will, will uh, last us for the future, but provide the anchor point for a potential town square as well. And the architects are looking at that on a global basis. What I'd like to see is more broad community input in that process. Bob Levy. 
As Sandra mentioned, uh, we were at a meeting this afternoon. I was the loud mouth in the back row, but I was sitting next to one of the librarians who through most of the meeting had a big smile on her face. And I asked the question, uh, I can see from the diagram where the bookshelves are going to be. Are they going to be freestanding? Are they going to fall over if there's an earthquake? Are there going to be enough bookshelves for us? Is there room to expand? And I was told that A, the bookcases, although they look freestanding, are bolted securely to the floor, and B, there's enough bookshelves and enough space in the library to handle 20 years of growth at the rate at which we've grown in the past. So we may have to enlarge the library sometime again, but I don't expect to be alive and around when it happens. <laughs> Dolly Sandoval. I think the library project has actually been a very exciting project that the voters asked the city council to take on. The city management and the city council has uh, devised a, pl a funding mechanism to fund the $22 million library uh, ticket at this time, and the size has not been decreased. I've been impressed with the architectural renderings and the planning because both community members, some of you in the audience here, and frontline staff members helped design the library so that you have people who are going to be working in the library day in and day out being able to figure out what's the best intake for the uh, hundreds and thousands of books that they have uh, every week that they have to deal with. Many people don't know this, but the Cupertino Library is the most used county library in Santa Clara County. I'm glad that we're expanding it, and I'll be happy to um, help fundraise for it because it will need some public dollars still. Patrick Kwok? I'll approach the library in three different ways. Number one, I'll look at the capacity. Uh, I recall that 1984, we had a second revision on the library. It's taking well, almost 20 years for another expansion of the library to be, to be built. So we need to look at the capacity and make sure that what, we have enough capacity to last for at least 20 years. Uh, the next one is the design. We want to make sure that the design of the, cap of the library is consistent with the neighborhood, the heart of the city. At the same time, uh, I want to make sure that the design, uh, that we have capable consultant to do the design and uh, make sure that we do not spend any unnecessary uh, money on over design the, the library and make sure that we don't have what they call a project crib that a lot of unnecessary things that nice to have, but uh, it's going to be a first class library. I'll be watching very closely about the construction part of it, make sure that it will not be, it will be within the budget and also uh, on time. And finally, the budget, and I think we have very competent city staff to come up with some finance, innovative way to finance the three million dollars and let's stick to it and build a library that is, that everybody can use it. Thank you. <clears throat> we have another issue with several questions. Um, it's housing. I'm going to read each of the questions and then you can address whichever part of it you want or maybe all of it. First is, what is your definition of high density housing and what is your stand on it? Then, would you support the construction of multi-story apartment buildings in Valco, heart of the city, and North De Anza areas? And lastly, how can we resist the ABAG coercion to increase density of housing and create below market rate real estate? And let's start with uh, Dolly Sandoval. Can you read that last question? Sure. <laughs> and this is all in a minute. Uh, <laughs> you can talk, you know, address any part of this that you want. How can we resist the ABAG coercion to increase density of housing and create below market rate real estate? You could, okay. use, you could use a lifeline, I think. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I ask the audience? <laughs> um, I think the basic question is where do, where do I stand on high density housing and do, do I uh, consider it important? The absolute answer is yes. I think for a number of reasons stated in my opening, but primarily because there are so many people who commute to this city to work rather than are able to live in the city. And primarily that's the reason because there's not enough housing. So I think we will need to build higher density housing. And my thought is that you need to put it on mass transit 
or major uh, traffic corridors. So building high de higher density housing, whether that's townhomes to own or apartments to rent uh, and single family homes or some combination thereof, makes sense to, to me to put it in areas that are freeway accessible and mass transit accessible. I, I think that uh, what I would look for in stopping a project is the impact that it would have on an existing neighborhood. And your time's up. Thank you. Uh, Bob Levy. I've said to a number of people that with the price of land here in Cupertino, uh, if you tried to subdivide a, an acre into lots that were small enough to put tents on, you couldn't sell them as affordable housing. It'd be too expensive because the land is too expensive. The difficulty with tents is that you can't put a tent on top of another tent very easily. So my definition of high density housing would be uh, a minimum of 14 units per acre. And that's not very high at all and compared to some of the areas that we've lived in in the past. I was born and brought up in New York City. I've read a history of New York City and what the subways did to New York City in creating large complexes of apartment houses along the subway lines. I'm afraid that what we're going to have to do if we want to have more people live here in Cupertino is to do the same sort of thing that other people have suggested, and that's put high houses near tra transit. Patrick Kwok. Let me go back to the goal ABAC came up with a goal of 2,700 houses that we need to build in the next five years. But I would support that as a goal. And I would like to see what are the actual needs of Cupertino uh, based on the job and uh, uh, housing uh, ratio. As far as density is concerned, uh, the, 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 the expensive part of the housing is the land. So we should be looking at the major arterials like Stevens Creek uh, homesteads and along uh, Highway 280, where traffic is re easily accessible, where you can build a high density house. And high density, I would say, no one than three to four uh, level highs, but it has to be compatible and consistent with the neighborhood and uh, make sure it's not too, too high and not too dense. Jeff Patnow? As I said in my opening statement, I sit on the Planning Commission and I also am the planning rep on the Cupertino Housing Committee. With regard to higher density housing, only if it's done in a responsible fashion that would not impede the quality of life of the uh, impacted neighborhoods. With regard to multi-story housing at Valco, I do think that's something we ought to consider and look at. I believe there should be a housing component attached to uh, any large developments that may be coming to, uh, forward in the next several years. And then with regard to uh, ABAG, the Association of Barry Governments did inform Cupertino we must identify 2,720 housing units. It doesn't mean we have to build them, it just means we have to identify suitable locations for that. And so, you know, I believe that we, we do have an incredible need for housing here, and I think what ABAC is trying to do is to just to point it out to us, but I think it's obvious based on our streets and based on others who can't afford to live and work here. Thank you. Warren Mahoney? Yeah, I think we need to, to add to Cupertino's housing supply, but we need to be very careful about how we do it. And we need to be careful in a couple of different ways. One is with good design. While I was on a planning commission, we added a significant number of new houses down around HP, across from PW and the Forge and whatever, but we did it very carefully, keeping the lower units near the neighbors and building up toward the center so that it didn't impact the neighborhoods. Also, the placement in the city is very important. The units that were added down by HP, because people come into work in the morning at the same time as they're leaving their apartments, there was no additive traffic, so it really didn't add to the traffic issues there at all. Um, overall, we before we think about adding significant numbers of units, we also need to look at the overall city's infrastructure. Can the schools handle it? Can the traffic handle it? Can the other services handle it? Again, the tool to look at this all is the general plan. Unfortunately, we've already submitted at least a draft housing element up to Sacramento before we've looked at the rest of the general plan and before we know about the impact of how the things are going to play together. So I would work on NOLOs as one systematic, with one systematic approach. Thank you. Sandy James? 
I've been very active in housing, more active than I ever thought I would be. I sit on the Silicon Valley Manufacturing Group Housing Leadership Council, and uh, I would invite you all tomorrow at 11 o'clock right down the street on Stevens Creek behind our new fire station, and we are going to break ground on a very exciting affordable housing project that Mary Ellen Chow in the audience, the former executive director of Cupertino Community Services, and myself started four and a half years ago, and everybody said we couldn't do it. And we are opening, uh, we are cut, we are going to be um, breaking ground on 24 units of affordable housing and a new office for CCS. And that is a partnership between the county and the city and Cupertino National Bank and the firefighters and CCS and the residents of this community. I'm very proud of it. And I think it's a, it's a striking example of something a community can do when they work together and they build partnerships. In addition to that, I've worked very hard with, with uh, housing developers to build for sale attached housing, townhouses and condominiums, which they do not like to do because of litigation issues. And we have numerous projects just breaking ground in the city now that will bring new housing stock in the middle price range for first time homeowners and other people buying housing. Thank you. The next questioner states, Cupertino is very diverse in cultures. What's your view on this? And we'll start with Sandy James. Well, it just is. You know, it is what it is. And uh, we used to talk a lot about diversity. I remember our first two community congresses. We've had them for five years now, our annual community meetings. That was the topic, diversity, because people were having a great deal of difficulty learning about each other, learning to live together. Uh, and the last three years, including this year, it has not been a major topic because I do believe we've done an incredibly good job of acknowledging the fact that we are who we are here in Cupertino. Just look around you. You know, we're all very different. We come from different parts of the world, different parts of the country. We have different occupations. We have different families. And we are a multicultural uh, community that I think is a role model for accepting and celebrating who we are and working together toward the challenges we have in the community and toward the excitement and um, the wonderful part of our community. So, I mean, I'm out there all the time doing everything. I was the bride at the Moon Festival this year, for Pete's sake, you know. And um, I just think that we all do that. And more and more and more, uh, we acknowledge and recognize that that's what Cupertino is all about. Thank you. Oren Mahoney? Yeah, I think that I think it has been a challenge. I think it's something that uh, that the city has worked on and done well. As I walk neighborhoods now, I don't hear it as near the issue that I did a couple of years ago. And I think that part of that is just finding different ways for people to get together and do things together. The scene, the new senior center, is a great example. If you go over there, there's all kinds of all the different people from all the different backgrounds are working together. In the same way, at the school level, um, uh, it, it seems to work, especially at the lower school level. I think the biggest issue for Cupertino and where I hear it coming up is not ethnicity or culture, it's language. Uh, the language is where it really gets in the way, whether it be signs, uh, whether it be you know, language problems in the schools that, that people are complaining about. So I think that the city is, is open to that. I think there are ways that we can work on the language thing, work on the sign thing. I have some creative ideas to do that. But I think we're moving forward, we're making progress, and it's just going to get better. Ms. Sandoval? I, I would agree with the previous speakers. We are a very diverse community, and I actually appreciate that, um, being of a diverse ethnic background myself. Um, as a teacher, I see that ethnicity difference in our schools, but I think it goes beyond what we're doing now and how we work together. I think what it is we can do as a United Council uh, in these next few years is going to be extremely important. There's a number of earthquake preparedness programs, CPR and first aid training that the city offers to neighborhood associations and groups of neighbors. And I think it's important to have those types of trainings in a plethora of languages so that all our neighbors can be trained, so that you don't have to be trained simply in English but can be helpful in your native language also. Also, um, I've been uh, very active at De Anza, where we have a very diverse student body and faculty and staff in our associations there, educating all our employees and educating residents in general to our rich cultural backgrounds and uh, uniqueness that we all bring to the city. Mr. Patno. As somebody who grew up in the public schools here in Cupertino, I went to Stevens Creek, Kennedy, and I graduated from Monta Vista High School. I grew up in a community, in a diverse community. I will say that outside of the language barrier, I believe 
everybody in this community has the same feelings and interests. We care about our children's future. We care about the quality of the education that our children are getting. We care about public safety. We care about having appropriate retail like bookstores and uh, here in quality restaurants here in Cupertino. At, at no, regardless of our background, we all share these things. And I believe we should be celebrating our uniqueness. We should be celebrating our diversity. And I also think we should do more to <clears throat> reach out to those groups that don't feel that their interests are being represented here uh, in local government. Mr. Kwok? As an immigrant of culture of uh, ethnic background, I'm really proud that I'd be able to share my own cultural uh, diversity uh, with the people in Cupertino. And this is very, very important because as more we appreciate the cultural diversity and the cultural richness, the more we understand each other, the more we be able to bridge the gap and uh, bring the community into one one, co one community. Uh, I would like to see more uh, outreach program, uh, something like a multi multiple multi uh, multicultural events such as the Moon Festival, and any other events that is inclusive of all ethnic backgrounds, so that we can come in here and network with each other, and then try to learn more about each body's background and cultural diversity. But Cupertino has gone a long way with the increase in population, but we still have to uh, continue our effort to promote cultural diversity. Mr. Levy? Cupertino's residents are a smart, hard-working bunch. The smart, hard-working parents have smart, hard-working children. Uh, if it weren't for those smart, hard-working children, we wouldn't have the good schools that we have. Smart, hard-working people find it very difficult to find time for discrimination. You look at me and you can say, oh boy, he's a Euro-American, or you can say he's a Dutch-American, or a French-American, or an Irish-American, or a German-American, or a Protestant-American, or a Jewish-American, or a Catholic-American. Forget it. I'm an American, and so are all the people in the community. As long as we take the attitude that says the other people are our neighbors, and our neighbors are our friends, we don't have a problem with diversity. We should all take pride in our backgrounds, but we shouldn't let them get in the way of our lives here in Cupertino. Thank you very much. I'd like to squeeze in one more question before we get to um, closing arguments. And here it is. What is your vision for the heart of Cupertino, if any, and where would it be? And we'll start with <laughs> Bob Levy. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm going to get in trouble because the heart of Cupertino, defined 10 years ago in the general plan, extended from the Oaks to Valco. We have two shopping centers, both of which have an awful lot of empty stores at the ends of it. And we have a major intersection uh, which consists of Stevens Creek Boulevard and, and De Anza Boulevard, both of which are six-lane divided highways. So that's the heart of the city as defined 10 years ago. It seems to me that we're a city in search of a downtown. Uh, the older residents remember when that intersection was the downtown. I was talking to somebody uh, last night who said when he left Burbank area down at uh, San Jose, the next place he found uh, any group of buildings was out here at the Four Corners area. So we're going to have to define what the heart of the city is and what it means to us. The housing development that Mary Ellen Schell is working with is called the heart of the city, and that perhaps is the thing that we should think of in terms of the heart of the city, a cluster that does things for us. Th th thank you. And Mr. Kwok. The way Cupertino is built, we have the Wild Coast Shopping Center in one end, the Oak, the Oak Center in the other end, and in between we have the Town Center. Uh, what I would envision is that we should bring all these three major uh, areas together as one, 
The only way we can do it is to improve the intersections of uh, De Anza Boulevard and Stevens Creek and uh, have a lot of mixed use along uh, Stevens Creek. The hotel and the apartment uh, project coming up there will be a, 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 a one way uh, to improve the downtown and also the heart of the city. But at the same time, the town center project, the new library, and that uh, will be another way that we can bring the community a bit more closer so that it will be a walkable community for everybody. Warren Mahoney. Well, I talked earlier about the potential to do what I call a town square. I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say that's going to create the heart of the city. I'm not sure that, that there is any single place that's going to be the heart of, of Cupertino. But I do think we have an opportunity in an area where people are going to come anyway. It is the most heavily used library. So as people come there, instead of coming and leaving and going somewhere else, maybe to get a cup of coffee or go to the bookstore or, or all the other things that could exist around that, I think we have the opportunity to create something unique there. Um, it's, it's sort of the only free place that we have left. And whether we, uh, as people have been brainstorming, whether we close Torrey <laughs> as one thing, uh, whether we raise the plaza out here and turn that into part of it, I don't know what the answer is. I think we need to step back and look at that. But if we're going to create a single place where people can gather and spend what I call quality time, where you're going to not just go in and go out, that's probably the only place that we can do it at this point in time. Sandy James? Well, actually, we're well on our way. And if you'd been at the meeting today, or and we were talking about this very thing in the library development, we have a vision for a heart of the city right here uh, with our new library building and the beautiful plaza that we're designing. And Dee Connor and Ed Storm have bought the property across the street from Torrey between Rodriguez and Pacifica. They have about two-thirds of that land. And they are working with the neighborhood and with staff uh, uh, with a proposal for a mixed-use development, which would include housing and some office office and a parkland in the middle with a medical dental building facing onto De Anza and some restaurants as you walk through there which would add into the area where we are right now into a beautiful walkable community. We have the new hotel and the standalone restaurant and the apartments and the parkland on the corner of De Anza and Stevens Creek and that again will be a very walkable space that will bring you back and forth across the street from one to the other that is what uh, the vision is, that this whole community will now begin to become a heart of the city, where you can dine, you can go to the library, you can wander, you can talk, um, you can have your friends stay. And so we are really well on the way, and you need to all kind of join in the process. There's been a lot of public meetings and a lot of dialogue on that already. Mr. Pat, now? I guess I have a little different take on this. And when I think of the heart of Cupertino, for some reason the image that popped in my head was our neighborhoods, our parks, and our schools. And in my opinion, that's what represents the, our, the heart of Cupertino and the lifeblood of our community. With regard to the technical heart of the city plan, which is what I think your, que your question was in reference to, I do believe that there are opportunities uh, in the town center to develop something that I do believe would be an asset to the community, uh, done only if we are careful about traffic, if we are careful about what it is that the surrounding uh, neighborhoods feel about it and the businesses that are currently at that same site. But I also think we, we shouldn't ignore the Oak Shopping Center and what that used to be and what it could be in the future. And I feel the same way about Valco as well. And Ms. Sandoval. I would agree in terms of defining what the heart of the city is. I think a lot of people have talked about the heart of the city project being uh, stemming from the library development that's going to occur in the uh, possible mixed-use facilities that we'll have in this particular city hall area. Um, but I think the heart of the city, again, is we're an exciting, vibrant area where people in the community come together to either hear music, have discussions, um, enjoy each other's company. Right now that occurs quite a bit over at Memorial Park. And I think we ought to actually spread out those types of areas. There should be a walkability area up in the Monta Vista area so that people can come down and enjoy the coffee and conversation over there. Where I live, on the other side of town, um, it would be nice to have the crossroads area become a mini heart of the city. Valco, with its redevelopment in several years, I think can is optimal for having another heart of the city. So that we're not all going to one particular area, but we're seeing the assets throughout our entire community and enjoying those assets. Thank you. Now we come to time for closing statements. You have two minutes. 
I'm going to call on you in the reverse order of your opening statements. And so that means we're going to start with Orrin Mahoney. Thank you. I'd like to close with some of the same reasons I opened with as to why I would make a difference as your city council representative. First of all, broad civic and community experience. My civic experience in Cupertino is long, but it's also deep. While I've been on boards of directors and commissions, I've also painted gazebos in Memorial Park, helped build homecoming floats, and served hot dogs at Oktoberfest. I'm committed to a, building a better Cupertino in any way that I can. Second, a fresh approach to Cupertino's issues. It's time to step back and take a broad view of the city as a whole and decide where and how future development should take place. I've learned in my experience at Hewlett Packard, on the Planning Commission, on many civic and volunteer boards, that a few select people do not have all the answers. Most problems are best solved with ideas from those closest to the situation. We need a way to systematically gather community input before we create a new general plan that locks in the city, uh, how the city will evolve over the next 10 years. Third, improve communications. At the Cupertino Community Congress that was held earlier this month, communications between the city and the community was identified as one of the top issues. Again, we need to have more community input first instead of community reaction later as we plan new projects. Finally, commitment to Cupertino. My proven civic commitment of over 30 years and business background give me the experience to be your choice for city council. That's why current Vice Mayor Richard Lowenthal, Santa Clara Supervisor Liz Niss, nine former Cupertino mayors, neighborhood leaders, educators, and local business people are giving me their broad-based support. I hope I can count on your support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy James. You know, I've worked for you for 12 years, as I said, when we started this, and my record is a public record. So I can sit here and tell you all kinds of things about what I've accomplished, but you already know what I've accomplished because we've accomplished it together. It is a matter of public record. I'm not going to promise you the world because you know what I've done. You know how I work. I start my day almost every weekday morning at Hobie's at my table there talking to all of you. I am very accessible. I listen to all various aspects of this community. I talk to business people, I talk to educators, I talk to students, I talk to community leaders, other regional leaders. I'm a big believer in private partner, uh, private um, public partnerships, and that we will not solve a lot of our issues in isolation, but we need to build regional relationships. I have those relationships, I have a history with you. Why am I running again? Simply because the job is not finished yet. We have a lot to do. We have a lot of projects in line. The world has changed. Uh, we need to change with it. We need to be prepared, and we need to do it together. I've been honored to serve with you, to work with you, and to have your vote for the last 12 years. If you want me to work for you for four more years, I'm here. I will promise you only what I've always promised you. I will work very hard. I look and listen to everything. Uh, you will have access and input to me, and I will make the very best decision I can. You might not always agree with me, but you will know it is an honest decision built upon integrity and honesty and an admiration for this community that I've lived in for over 30 years. Thank you. Jeff Patnow. The Cupertino of tomorrow will be shaped in large part by the three people you will elect to city council on November 6th. And in addition to the issues that we brought up earlier with regard to the general plan, housing, and other land use related issues, I actually want to talk for a moment about the, the Cupertino of tomorrow that I would like to live in. And you know, as somebody who's lived here my entire life and is planning to start my own family here, I'm thinking about what C Cupertino in the next decade could be like. And when I say that, I mean it could be like in a way that wouldn't hurt our quality of life, wouldn't damage the I impacting neighborhoods. Let me give you a, a personal anecdote. When you know Christine and I will go out in the evenings, we'll perhaps go to Las Gatas for dinner, and then maybe we'll drive to Mountain View to catch a movie, and then maybe we'll drive down to Stevens Creek Boulevard and walk around Barnes and Noble. Sometimes we'll do dinner in, in the bookstore, sometimes the movie in the bookstore. Now, what's the problem with this, which, this scenario? I've spent a lot of time in my car. I have spent no time in Cupertino. And, I've, and I haven't spent any of my dollars in Cupertino. There's no reason why when the sun sets over the foothills that Cupertino should just shut down. I do think there are opportunities with regard to economic development that we can be working harder to identify, recruit, and bring into Cupertino those 
res those resident serving businesses that we've identified that we would like here. And those include bookstores. Those include quality restaurants. We could do all these things without impacting our neighborhoods and our quality of life. So as I think about the next two years that we work on the general plan, I think about the next decade of the Cupertino that I'd like to live in and start and raise a family in. Those are my thoughts and uh, in large part the reasons why I'm running. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Levy. Uh, Jeff said what is going to be the most important part of your life for the next 10 years, and that's the general plan. You're going to replace three of the five city council members who are going to be the people who will guide and sign off on a new general plan. The old general plan was put together with a lot of input. It was used as a working document whenever someone had a need, usually a developer. The general plan was modified to allow that, mod that development to take place. I think what is needed is a firm plan for the future, one that satisfies all of us without sacrificing a small minority to make it possible for the rest to live good lives. I think that the people that you elect at this election will affect 10 years of your future. Looking at my white hair and when I stand in front of a mirror, I'm not sure I'm going to be around 10 years from now, but I'd like to know that the general plan that we put together together is going to last for those 10 years and be a good one for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Dolly Sandoval. As someone born and raised in this community, I thank you for allowing me to serve you the last 10 years, both in a very public life, elected to the Foothill De Anza Board, and in, in a more private life, but working on local nonprofit issues, working with many of you with our school districts on our bond measures. I have enjoyed that time immensely. I do believe that the city has some great opportunities and also some fabulous challenges that need to be taken up in the next decade. For the next four years, I'd like to commit to you that I will put my energy and my enthusiasm, my creativity, and my tenacity to work for you to help solve those issues of traffic, of housing, of education, of communication. I'd like to be your problem solution uh, person. So I would hope that you would visit my website at www.dollysandoval.com. I'd hope that you would email me, not just over the next 10 days, but hopefully, voters willing, over the next four years. Let me know what's on your mind, because the best representative that I've been on the Foothill De Anza and often comes from input from you and suggestions from you on how to deal with certain issues. Again, you know a lot about us, but I think this particular election calls for leadership and responsibility, and that I have shown you that over the last 10 years, which is why you have elected me and re-elected me on the College Board. I've been accountable to you, and I thank you for that. And I ask you again to please consider me as one of your three votes on November 6th. Patrick Kwok. Cupertino is facing a very strong challenge ahead in the next few years. As everybody indicated, the general plan amendment, the blueprints of Cupertino that dictates how we're going to shape the future of the city, the land use plan, the housing, the traffic issue. And also, we are, Cupertino is also facing an economic decline. So we need somebody with very strong experience that will be able to handle the budget. As I indicated earlier, uh, the, gen the general fund is going down from the year 2001 to 2006. We will, have, we will be below our $50 million uh, reserve. We need to have some expertise, some innovative way to build the reserve back up again. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you need some people with very strong proven experience and leadership uh, that could be able to uh, uh, approach this type of issues. I've been in city government for 30 years now and very strong uh, experience in finance. I'm very, very fortunate to have the endorsement 
from Congresswoman Anna Ashu, Congressman uh, Mike Honda, and all four, five of the Board of Supervisors in Santa Clara County, plus five of the uh, ex-mayors, and also uh, the support of uh, current Councilman uh, Michael Chang and a lot of local leaders. They believe in me. They feel that I can be a benefit to the City Council. So on November 6th, please vote, vote Patrick Kwok for City Council so I can be part of the solutions to bring Cupertino a place called home. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, for your views on these issues. Thank you, audience, for your questions. Thank you for watching. And remember, for more information, you can log on to cupertino.org or smartvoter.org. Good night. <laughs>